This is section uh, one, two, day one. In exercise 71 to 74, determine whether each statement is true or false. If the statement is false, make the necessary changes to produce a true statement. 71, if the product of a point's coordinate is positive, the point must be in quadrant one. That is false, quadrant one, or quadrant uh, three. If a point is on the x-axis, it is neither up nor down, so x is equal to zero, that's false y is equal to zero. If a point is on the y-axis, its x-coordinate must be zero. That's true. The ordered pair 2, 5 satisfies this equation right here. Let's go 3 times 5 minus 2 times 2 is equal to negative 4. So 15, did I plug that in right? See, the 5 goes in the y, the 2 goes in the x. Yeah, 15 uh, minus 4 is equal to negative 4. So 11 is equal to negative 4. That, so that is a false statement. How do we make it true? 3y minus 2x is equal to uh, 11. There, that would be, that would make that statement true. In exercises 75 to 78, list the quadrant or quadrant satisfying each condition. Uh, the product of xy is greater than zero. In other words, they're saying that the product is positive. That'd be quadrant one and quadrant three, because one, they're both positive, and quadrant three, they're both negative y divided by x is less than zero. Well, multiplying and dividing, that would yield the same sign. So they're saying negative. That'd be quadrant two or quadrant four. x to the third is greater than zero. So in other words, uh, if you raise a number x to the third power, you get a positive. So x must be positive. So x is positive. And y to the third is less than zero, so y is negative. So where is x positive and y is negative? That's in positive negative. That's in the fourth quadrant. So where is x to the third negative? And y to the third is positive. So where is x negative and y is positive? That is in the second quadrant. Find the domain and range of the relation. The domain is 0, 10, 20, 30, and 40. It's the x values. The domain is the input values. The range is the output values. So we have 9.1, 6.7, 10.7, 13.2, and 21.2. I'm just going too fast. 21.2. Determine whether each relation is a function if the x's repeat it is not a function, so none of the x's are repeat. Oh, no, the x's repeat right here. So uh, determine whether each is a function, not a function. 1, 3, 6, 8, the x's do not repeat. That means there's only one output for each uh, unique input. So this is a function. Solve each equation for y and then determine whether the equation defines y as a product of x. So y is equal to negative 2x plus 6, just minus the 2x over. So now for every input, we have just one output. Now this is a circle, center at 0, 0 with a radius of 1, and it fails the vertical line test, but that's not how it, it says to solve this. It says solve for y. So we have y equals 1 minus x squared. y squared is 1 minus x squared. y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared, because we square root both sides. So for every, uh, every value that we plug in for x, we'll get two y's with the exception of negative 1 and 1, but still it's going to fail that vertical line test. Uh, so yes, this is a function. This is not a function. Checkpoint 4, if f of x is equal to that, evaluate each of the following. f of negative 5 is equal to negative 5 squared minus 2 times negative 5 plus 7. So 25 plus 10 plus 7, 35 plus 7, I'm getting 42. f of x plus 4 is equal to x plus 4 squared minus 2 times x plus 4 plus 7. So x squared plus 8x, you know, we're foiling this. We're taking x plus 4 times x plus 4. Uh, so plus 16, because that'd be the last. 
let's distribute the negative 2 minus 2x minus 8 plus 7. So x squared plus 6x, right? Yep, that. 16 minus 8 is 8, plus 7 is 15. And letter C, f of negative x. So we're doing negative x squared minus 2 times negative x, then plus 7. So when we square a negative, we get a positive. That's x squared plus 2x plus 7. Checkpoint 5, graph the functions uh, in the same rectangular coordinate system. Select integers for x starting with negative 2 and ending with 2. How is the graph of g related to the graph of f? So let's pick our x's. Let's do 2x, and here we'll do 2x minus 3. So uh, we're going from negative 2 to 2. Negative 1, 0. <clears throat> Excuse me, 1, 2. Negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. And then we're going to do those same values because we're multiplying x by 2, but then minusing 4. Let's put this away. So we're taking these values and minusing 3, so negative 7. All these are going to be 3 lower. Negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, and then 1. So they're 3 lower. Well, that lowers the graph by 3. So we have negative 2, neg negative 1, negative 2, 0, 1, and 2. And I have to go down to negative 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And the highest looks like 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's do the first one here. The 2x is negative 2, negative 4. Uh, negative 1, negative 2. 0, 0. 1, 2, and 2, 4. So there's the first line. And then everything after that is 3 down. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And, and you could use negative 7, negative 5. That would actually be right there. Negative 5, then negative 3, then negative 1, and then 1 right here. So we get this, <laughs> this line right there. Uh, how is the graph of G related to graph of F? So down, not 5, down 3. Checkpoint 6. Use a vertical line test to identify graphs in which Y is a function of X. So this is yes, it passes the vertical line test. This one fails, that's no. This one seems to pass everywhere, yes. And here's a circle which definitely fails the vertical line test. So no, that is not a function. And uh, now we jump into the homework. And uh, we have determined whether each relation is a function. Give the domain and range for each relation. How about we pick uh, number one? So number one, the domain. I think that's in the homework. That's OK. Uh, one, three, and five. And the range is two, four, and five. That is. Uh, Yes, that's a function. How about one that's not a function? Which one should I pick? Oh, nine is definitely not a function. Number nine, the domain is one, and the range is four, five, and six. And if we were to map this, one goes to four, one goes to five, one goes to six, that's definitely not a function. As a matter of fact, that is, uh, that's a vertical line. That, that is a vertical line. Graph approaches but never touches the dashed vertical lines. Let's talk about asymptotes. So this is an asymptote here. We have an asymptote at x is equal to 1. And we can say that the limit as x approaches 1, and x can never be 1 because we have an asymptote there, of this function of f of x is equal to uh, does not exist, let's put it that way. It doesn't exist at the point, but we can go from the left, as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x, is going down to negative infinity. So the function behaves in this manner. It's going down to negative infinity. Then the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x, now the behavior of the graph on the right side of the asymptote is going up to infinity. And that's why at this value, the limit doesn't exist. The behavior is just non-existent at 
the point or at the, the place where x is 1. So this asks the question, the problem really is, what is f of 2? Well, f of 2 is 1. In exercises 11 through 26, determine whether each defi uh, equation defines y as a function of x. Well, anytime y is to an even power, this is not, it will not be a function. So we could go through this very quickly. Yes, yes, no, no. Uh, this is actually yes, because you don't have the plus or minus. This is a yes, this is a function, because y is to an odd. So you could go uh, yes, yes, no, no, yes. Because it doesn't have plus or minus, it only has the minus, and this would definitely be a yes because y is to an odd power, not an even. What should we pick here? How about we pick, uh, let's pick number 30. Uh, g of negative 1 is, if we plug 1 into x squared, we get 1, plus 10, because we have negative 10 times negative 1, then minus 3. So 11 minus 3 is 8. g of x plus 2, there's a way we have to do you know, a little bit of algebra because we have to square this. Minus 10 times x plus 2 minus 3. x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 10x minus 20 minus 3. We get x squared. 4x minus 10x is minus 6x. 4 minus 20 is negative 16, so minus 19. And then on letter C, g of negative x is equal to... Now, if you square the negative, you get a positive, so that's x squared. Negative 10 times negative x is going to be plus 10x. And then on the end, we have minus 3. In exercises 39 to 50, graph the given functions f and g in the same rectangular coordinate system. Select integers for x starting with negative 2 and ending with uh, negative 2 to 2. Once you've obtained your graphs, describe how the graph of g is related to the graph of f. So let's, how about we try 42? So we have x negative 2x and negative 2x plus 3. And we're trying to discover why this goes up 3 from minus 2x. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So now we're going to take all of these and multiply by negative 2. 0, negative 2, negative 4. And then we would do the exact same thing to start out with. We'd multiply all those x's by negative 2, but then add 3. So the y values are going to be 3 more than these right here. So 7, 5, 3, 1, and negative 1. That's why the graph is moved up 3. Negative 1, negative 2, 1, and 2. Negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And negative 1. So negative 2, 7, uh, negative 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, negative 2, it's down here, and then 2, negative 4. So that should be a nice line. Mine's a little curved. Uh, but then um, everything, the next one is just up 3 from that. Uh, oh, I should have started this at negative 2, 4, 1, 2, 3. 4 like that. This shouldn't be here. Uh, so the other one is 7. Negative 2, 7 is up here. Um, negative 1, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like that. Uh, 0, 3, 1, 1. And 2, negative 1 down here. So that's 3 up. So up 3 and hopefully your graph is a little better than that one. Next says 51 to 54, graph the given square root functions, f and g, in the same rectangular coordinate system. Use the integer values of x given to the right of each function to obtain ordered pairs. Because only non-negative numbers have square roots that are real numbers, be sure that each group appears only for values of x that cause the expression under the radical sign to be greater than or equal to zero. Once you've obtained your graphs, describe how the graph of g is related to the graph of f. So let's try 52, I guess. Here we have... The x's for the first one are 0, 1, 4, 9. And they're just giving you nice values that we can actually take the square root of. So we'll do y values for the square root of x, y values for the square root of x, square root of x, plus 2. So we have 0, 1, 2, and 3, and then 2, 3, 4, and 5. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way out here. And then one, two, three, four, we'll have to go to five. So zero, zero, one, 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 two, three, four is two, and then nine is three. So here's the graph of the square root of x. That's the parent graph for square root of x, for, for square root. Then zero, two, everything now is up two. One is now three. One, two, three, four is four. One, two, three, four. Now everything is up two, excuse me, everything's up two. Uh, then nine is up to five. So here we have the same shape except everything is up two.